Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Mini RPG of the Week. We're delighted to have you back, and I say we because I'm joined by Orion, a man I genuinely thought had been on this show somewhere in the double digits, but it turns out has only been here five times previously. Yeah, we were just dis discussing in this in the call beforehand. I haven't casted a single season four. The last time I was here was the 21st of June last year uh, for an edition in season three. But I'm back and we are bigger and better than ever here at Mini RPG of the Week, aren't we, Noah? Do you want to tell us we what you might have cooking absolutely. in the oven at the moment? Oh, we're delighted to announce, I mean, not announce, it's been announced already, but to reiterate that tonight, tickets do go on sale for Mini RPG of the Week Ultimate, the LAN happening in Compiègne in, and I should know the dates, what is it, like April? April, May, sometime <laughs> then, whatever. It's happening. Uh, I think it's May. It's May the 11th or something like that. I don't know. Go check out the announcement. Just throwing in the a dot at a go calendar at this point. Come on, man. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I need to book my accommodation, probably my flights as well. It would be useful if I could make it there but as said tickets will go on sale tonight after this week's edition ends because you know we want to make sure that the players are the first in line to actually get their tickets uh, and having to go out early just to make sure you're on the page in time doesn't seem like it's fair to anyone um all the pricing of the tickets of course can be found over in the discord server uh which you can check on exclamation mark discord we'll bring that up in chat exclamation mark tickets will just bring up the ticket page and I will remind everyone that it's not just tickets as well. You can just buy an entry ticket, but along with your entry ticket, if you're planning on attending, you can purchase some of the mini RPG of the week ultimate merch. That is either a hoodie or a t-shirt. And I will tell you that they're great. Honestly, we got some test hoodies a while ago for the staff of mini RPG of the week. And I wear my hoodie all the goddamn time. It's so comfortable. It's really nice. Uh, I highly, highly recommend them, um, which, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm trying not to feel too much like a shill here, Orion, but like I genuinely <laughs> do love that hoodie. And I'm like, hey, go check them out. We've I nine mean, different colors available. I mean, as someone that's just seen them for the first time, they look sexy. They do look yeah. sexy. Yeah. You get, you, you get, you get your, your nickname. <laughs> yeah, you get your nickname, country on it as well. Like, what is not to love? Yeah, uh, plenty to love on that. So yeah, do go and check out tickets. Again, exclamation mark tickets will bring up the link in chat or you can go check it out on Discord, on Twitter. In the meantime, my God, we are into the map and it is uh, going to be a banger this evening made by Hero Tax. We have Crystal Sanctuary designed using the mod pack and modeled after Eon 42, a map by Zeeks of Frontiers. Uh, that map was part of their Artifact Cup a map that I really enjoyed at the time, a tournament I really enjoyed. I was casting that one alongside, you'll know who this person is, Orion, uh, alongside Max Formal. Uh, who? Max Formal. I'm joking, I know, I know who he is. I'm jo I, I know who Messed he is. Up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually see much of that tournament myself. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah. But the map style looks really cool. Looks very, like, kind of OG TMNF mod yeah. style doesn't it with like all the like um what do you call it i don't know medieval textures yeah. i guess yeah um destroying our bit rate <laughs> yeah really is i'm i'm struggling to watch this stream but we'll try and persevere with it um but the map looks tricky at first glance just following is it pokey tm um yeah. just following him a little bit definitely kind of a bit more on the janky side you have to say you know it doesn't it doesn't flow but that's mm. not necessarily a bad trait for an rpg map it is genuinely a style like sometimes a bit of yeah. jank does have its own kind of unique charm and challenges no it's 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 great it's those kind of maps you know that uh, a lot of especially the older rpg veterans uh, refugees from previous games where it is all about that car control and knowing what your car is doing in dodgy situations. I don't think folk you made that checkpoint didn't. So uh, definitely failable. That couple of tricky platform jumps jumps into the uh, uphill then as well. It's going to be fun. Uh, we have invisible GPS car, something that has plagued us. No, it's back. There it is. Uh, it briefly flickered out again, but we should be able to see it there in a second. And uh, plenty of quarter pipes in this map as well is one of the things that Hero Attacks did let us know in those mapper notes that uh, we will be keeping an eye on in terms of how they go. Yeah, you can see that that quarter pipe there actually kind of... Not the quarter pipe I was expecting, uh, mm. based on what the mapper had said. You know, you think of a quarter pipe as your classic kind of like Tony Hawk bridging the gap kind of thing. But this one is an 
up and over and back down the other side, which you don't see too many of, really. Um, mm. Interesting path, for sure. And you can see the GPS as well doing a few little bug slides on the grass, which we might see the players use to just try and optimize and maintain their speed. I don't think it's penalty grass, uh, from what I can tell. Um, is it? Can you see if it's penalty grass or not? It's just the color is throwing me off. Yeah, I have no idea. And part of the problem with mods is while they look sick, it becomes hard to identify a surface immediately a lot of the time, especially when you're talking yeah. about grass versus penalty grass. Um, might be penalty grass? Uh, hard to say. We will see. I mean, uh, this is an interesting part of the map, even just off the start as well, because uh, Hero Attacks has let us know that, you know, there is the potential to maybe go for a little bit of a bug slide on this starting grass section, but whether or not players actually go for it, whether or not it's even worth it, is something Hero Attacks is even a little bit unsure of. So the potential is there, and whether or not it becomes used remains to be seen. Now, there are some later sections like this one, Sidzer is currently on, where a little bug slide definitely going to be to your advantage. That I think that is penalty grass, just based on how we saw Sidzer go around it without the slide, which means that you really do want to be sliding around it if possible. Yeah, I definitely think so. You can see a few players as well at the end, kind of like just trying to get a bug slide uh, on, onto the concrete and get into the finish as quickly as possible as well. Doesn't seem like that's as necessary. Uh, we're seeing some respectable times coming through now. I think that is Yuzo on the right with a 54.7. Uh, Mappa said that a good time would be about a 53, but 52s are probably going to be possible towards the end uh, of the um, of the time trial. Uh, we're seeing Scandi out there as well. No surprise to see him. And we're also seeing, is that Morpia, uh, Morpia. in third place? Morpio, sorry. In, in third place, who has won the past two editions from what I remember you telling me before we went yeah. live. Yeah, uh, Morpio has had a great couple of weeks and would love a uh, third, would be up there all time. The only person to have ever won four editions in a row is Skandir. Uh, <laughs> that was not long ago at all, only a couple of weeks removed really from uh, that period of dominance that Skandir enjoyed. Uh, but two already back to back by Morpio is up there with the longest win streaks. Not many players have achieved that. Three would be crazy impressive. Uh, so we'll see if Morpio can manage to pull that off. Now, a map like this, like, look, we do, I say it a lot, uh, you know, there's a lot of maps that favor Scandir, but especially something that is a little bit more old school that does kind of favor precision and really knowing the limits of your car control, what angles you can bounce at, where you can afford to risk and take a little bit of time out by going for almost a side jump, these little bug slides in the middle requiring really precise timing to get the most out of. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of starting to feel like a Scandir week already, Orion. <laughs> I mean, he's looking good. It's it's such a tight map as well. Like all of the roads and surfaces, uh, and the optimal route is such a precise line. Scandi threading the needle, going top with a 52-3. That is a pretty exceptional time we've just witnessed there. What can Hazard do? 56 still. So, yeah, I think your assessment of uh, Scandi map is pretty accurate there. It's two seconds ahead of anyone else right now, and looking to have mastered the map already. It is worth noting the uh, the conversation that even led to you know us figuring out how many times you'd been on mini RPG of the week total uh, did come about because I you know asked you to guess who won uh, in the original artifact competition you know put on by Frontiers where Eon Forty Two the map that this is loosely based on using the mod pack kind of similar styling came from. Uh, and the answer was Scandir. Scandir did win that competition and he won it pretty handily in the end, as far as I remember as well. So probably feeling right at home, you know, <laughs> on a map like this. Yeah, yeah, he has probably got a huge grin on his face right now. And I I can imagine that he could even improve his time here. To oh, be honest. absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if there's any kind of further optimizations because you see a lot of like kind of going backwards to then go forwards kind of mm. thing or forwards to then go backwards and i'm wondering if there's any kind of potential exploits not necessarily a reroute but just kind of skipping a section and it may be being slightly faster we're not seeing any players employ that uh, in the time trial here but on a map like this it's entirely possible that shortcuts might be found 
Absolutely. We'll keep our eyes out for Seafill. Uh, usually a good player to kind of the, the canary in the coal mine, as it were, for uh, potential reroutes. Usually devotes at least kind of five to ten minutes of warm-up looking for potential there as well, uh, which is always a good time. It makes it even more impressive when he then does manage to do really well on just the standard path, given that he's often spending a lot of time in the warm-up, not learning that path, unlike some of the other players, just actively searching to break the map. Yeah, I want to also highlight the safe versus risky because I haven't really understood the risky finish yet. Is it complete engine off and you have to have enough Ooh. speed to then make it up the hill? You know, I haven't, I haven't really sure. looked at it in yeah. detail yet. Because yeah, well, you can... go right to then go up the hill and get to that risky finish. Mm. Or you can go left and I think your engine stays on. Um, mm. And then it's obviously slower but easier. Yeah, uh, I'll keep an eye out. I actually, I hadn't clocked if there was an engine off myself. Uh, and so if there is, that would make a lot more sense because otherwise, as you kind of point out, it's not the most difficult looking risky fin that we've ever seen. It is, you know, again, a couple of little platform jumps where we've definitely seen from some of the players already that in this section, that platform jumps are tricky, uh, which you don't want to be crashing out on. Uh, just some of the classics of an RPG here as well. This uphill quarter pipe allowing players to kind of, you know, maybe take it a little bit lower, maybe try and, you know, clip the checkpoint rather than jumping all the way up the hill to try and regain time. It's going to be fun. Jaxi is currently exploring as well. Uh, has managed to find checkpoint five, and so heading towards checkpoint six and maybe even a finish. Nope, that's a, that's a cave. Yeah, it's still just discovering the route. I mean, it's not obvious where to go. There's not much signage, no. but I guess that's the whole point of an RPG. You figure it out <laughs> and then optimize it. Uh, I think he has figured it out, but he's got stuff on a wall. So fifth time is the charm for Jaxi. Mm. Looks like he's got through this part and it's pretty obvious where to go here. Is he going to make cool. the jump? Just about another cool. jump. Never mind. But that just Safe. shows that you, you have to keep up so much momentum to actually, you know, make the jumps. You said that kind of like janky transitional platform. Mm. Um, can be quite hard to you know thread the needle through because like even that first turn there you can see just caught him out so i think yeah. it's going to be a one of those that's going to be like a, a map of attrition if you yeah. make a mistake somewhere and don't have the speed it's going to be very difficult for you to actually kind of regain the time and drive the map optimally mm -hmm. It's going to be very interesting. I'm also, I, I got eyes on that block at the end, and actually I might ask the player to go and zoom in on the block at the uh, risky fin at some point, because I almost think it, it might be a fragile block. Oh. Which would that mean would that, you know, those couple of, of platforms, would, you know, you really do have to nail your entry into that in order yeah. to not end up fragile up the little hill at the end. But when we get a little bit closer to the end there again, if we go cam seven, just zoom in on what the sign actually is <laughs> over that risky fin. <laughs> Well, looking back at the leaderboard, we have had Yannix overtake Scandir, actually, with a 51.8. So we're into the 51s. The map has said that a, uh, a 52 would potentially be possible, and Yannix already doing the impossible. Scandir, though, pips in with a 51.5, so both of those guys improving. And Morpio on a 52.7. So we've got two clear front runners at the moment. Um, Yannix currently, I believe, is second place on the all-time behind Hazard. Uh, they were tied on 10 wins for quite some time, from what you've told me. Uh, yeah. Hazard jumping up to 11, and Yannix potentially here has the opportunity to get it back to level pegging again. <laughs> um, just a reminder as well, uh, top three on the all-time uh, will... Is it that they get yeah, auto-qualified for... So, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, that is fragile. But yeah, the top three get auto qualified for uh, the mini RPG of the week LAN, or mini RPG of the week ultimate LAN, I should say. Correct. Um, yeah, no, that's absolutely three, right. Currently, uh, top currently three is the top Hazard, Yannick, Ice, Scandi, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Ice hanging on by the skin of his teeth, tied with uh, Scandir at the moment on eight wins apiece. But, you know, the difference being that Scandir ha has maintained nearly a 50% win rate so far in Season 4. And uh, Ice has managed to pick up one win in the middle of all of that. So is doing his bit trying to, you know, stay in that top three as much as he can. But it is tough when Scandir is picking up wins whenever he feels like showing up. And then you had Binks randomly showing up in Week 7 this edition, uh, th this season just to take his first and only win of mini RPG of the week and you're Let's like oh well, okay. Chat energy, honestly. 
Yeah, very funny. Um, and we're running out of weeks, uh, including this edition. Only 10 more editions before Mini RPG of the Week Ultimate in order to lock in those wins. So the scoreboard starting to clarify a little bit. And it does mean that, you know, I mean, for some players, the top is already kind of feeling out of reach. You'd need to win at this point pretty much all of them if you're sitting on one or two wins at the bottom of the leaderboard in terms of players who's actually picked up a win. But it is worth noting as well, uh, not only do the players who lock in that top three get their ticket to Mini RPG of the Week Ultimate, they will also get a piece of merch. They'll also get one of the sweatshirts uh, along with that ticket. So it's not just the basic ticket they're getting. They are also going to get a sweatshirt along with it. And maybe even a t-shirt. You know what? That's unconfirmed at the moment, though. One thing I want to draw attention to, you know all the players have been getting this, like, bounce thing at the start. Mm. Is that plastic? Because mm. it doesn't I don't think look so. that. It doesn't look that plastic. It just looks like they're driving into a wall and then driving backwards again. Oh, sorry. But, you mean the? Um, yeah, I thought you meant just the bubble up as they went up the ramp. But uh, it, it no. is, yeah, it might be might be plastic that they're banging their faces into to turn around. Yeah. Because there's I also obviously then the, really the booster that they go into. Ooh, Artis, little click. He's fine. Yeah, let's keep an eye out here then. Uh, so it's up, it's round, it's down. And then this little bit, not really seeing players go for the bug slide that was theorized by Hero Tax. Ah, yeah, that's, that's got to be plastic. Ah, yeah, plastic. it has to be, yeah. <laughs> 100% that is plastic. Very so anachronistic. I saw, I saw some people bumping into it and not really getting a bounce as such. I, mm. I, it just must be that if you carry more speed, obviously you bounce back faster. Yeah, it has to be plastic. Yeah. I just couldn't I hear the sound either. I also reckon there's probably something going on there with, you know, if you actually manage to hit with your nose, you get a decent bounce. If yeah, you're kind of hitting yeah, at an yeah. angle with a Square wheel a little on. bit more, then you're not quite getting as good of a bounce backwards. And also you have to do a lot more readjusting just to make the corner following up then as well. So it's going to be interesting and definitely a map that is, uh, it looks very punishing. Small mistakes, small clips, yes. small kind of, you know, speed losses are going to be a big deal because as Morpio shows there, you know, there's, there's a lot of speed checks and... Uh, not just speed checks, but kind of angle plus speed check. Good entry and good exit. Yeah, that quarter pipe is really throwing everyone off. Like, even I haven't figured out the right entry into it yet. It, it seems mm. like you need a lot of speed to start off with so that you don't kind of clip the actual, like, top of the quarter pipe itself before you, yep. like, go over the other side. So speed is one, but also just watching Morpio there, it looked like if you don't pivot enough as well, then you don't get a like perfect loop de loop and and down the other side. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, confusing, and I think it's definitely gonna catch some people out. It definitely will. Well, here we go, round one, no eliminations as we look to set some people up for the danger zone. Orion, we're also playing a new mode, I now realize, that you have not seen. I don't know if you've caught no. any season four streams up until this point, nope. but this is a new mini RPG of the week mode. It's our season four mode. Rather than just straight up eliminations for the bottom of every round, if you finish in the bottom 16, it'll be in this round, you enter the danger zone. And in the danger zone, you are essentially entered into a sub match with all of the other players in the danger zone, the bottom half of of that sub match are eliminated in the next round and uh we pick more players in that round as well to enter the next danger zone and on and on it goes i'm not sure i fully understand but we'll, we'll roll with it <laughs> easy listen you'll get it all right it's it, yeah, we're it, also going to be able to see it uh over on the side we'll be able to see which players are in the danger zone and it basically just comes down to it then that once you are in the danger zone you just need to beat half of the other players who are in the danger zone so right okay morpio Solid first round, 51.781 is a very good time. It has to be said fairly to uh, Hero Tax that I don't think that this author time was particularly optimized in his own words, that he didn't really grind it out too hard. And uh, so, you know, we were expecting to see times go down a long way. Maybe not as low as Morpio's already pushed it, a 51.248 at the end of that warm up. And uh, I mean, hey, maybe the chance to break that 51 barrier still. Ooh, that's a tough ask, though. I mean, a 51.5 from Scandir looked pretty good. Or maybe mm. it was... Yeah, no, it was Scandir with the 51.5. I think that 51.7 is second fastest. And... 51.2 is... Morpheus had a 51.2 Oh, sometime 51.2. At the end of that warm-up. Okay, so that's yeah, why I'm okay, saying so that's, uh, we're creeping right. to that 51 barrier. Okay, I didn't see that that 51.5 had been broken. So, yes, mm. I fully agree with you now that that... Oh, uh, that Orion, it's the danger zone. It's the danger zone. 
So these 16 players, they go into the danger zone. More than 16, because uh, obviously some players did not finish that round and so are automatically right. placed into the danger zone. The bottom half of these players go. They go home. Goodbye. Uh, or eight, eight players will be safe in this round, essentially. If your number is orange at the moment, you do not want to be behind more than eight other players that are orange. Okay. So how many players will be eliminated in this round then? Uh, like, it's if, a little say bit everyone makes it over the finish line. It's a little bit fishy in this round because there was more than 16 players in the danger zone. I believe that the way it works is that essentially the first eight players whose names are orange who make it across the line, no matter where they finish in the rest of the round, will be safe. Everyone else with an orange name gets eliminated. Right, okay. Well, we're looking at the front of the field at the moment. Never mind, we're looking at the back of the field as Charlotte yeah. with <laughs> a double respawn. Does get a nice little zoop though. He's going to have some speed coming through the field here. And... That is just how quickly he can catch you out. It looked great going forward, but the nose dipped and he wasn't able to make the jump. So once again, finds himself working from the back. This time gets it a lot better, carrying a lot of speed through. Nice little quarter pipe jump as well. Gets the turn around. Can he catch Wivers in front of him? Not really. He gets a fat slowdown on the penalty grass there. Almost down to flat zero on the speedometer. He is approaching the end of the map, currently in 52nd place. Does he have a chance here, Nua? I believe so. It's Listen, I, again, I'm just going to say it. Scoreboard, a little bit funky in these uh, in this very first round a lot of the time. Uh, and especially while we're still at 16 players in the danger zone. But we'll move out of that territory soon and all will become clearer, right? All will be okay. safe and clear and easy to understand, very importantly. Danger Zone's a great format. It's wonderful. Honestly, it's been so much fun because especially once we hit kind of top 10, it just comes down to 1v1s for elimination at all times. And that's oh. just exciting. Okay, okay. I, I'm looking forward to that bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's real good. So the players who are in great, they're eliminated. Very easy, including Seafill. Very exciting. Uh, the players who will now turn orange are our bottom 16 in this round. They will be back into the danger zone. Uh, we only have eight players in the danger zone at the moment, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah? Yes. No, we still have 16 in the danger zone. No, we have eight. It's just that the overlay is lying to me. So, do you see on the left of your screen, Orion, eight players in the danger zone at the moment? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so the bottom even... four of them will be eliminated. Yes. No matter gotcha. where they finish. They could finish first through eighth, and that would mean that fifth through eighth would be eliminated. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. I see how, Don't yeah, match. okay, I see how it works now. So you have eight players and you basically just need to be in the top half of those yes, players. Yes, exactly right. so. Okay, so even if uh, the first, like, so if you had all eight players finish positions one to eight. Yes, one through four would be five, safe, five, five eight, through eight would be eliminated. Yeah, even, even though, though they still finished five through eight. Yeah, yes. okay. What it does is it gives a little bit of protection to, you know, some of the better players and stuff as well. If you have an off round, you just need to not have an off round the next time around and off right. you go, you're fine. But the people in last place still get eliminated? Nope. Or no? They just go into the danger zone next round. Oh, right. Now it makes sense. Yes. I was thinking like, so the bottom four get eliminated and four players from the danger zone? No, 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 no. no. This elimination I, gotcha. replaces the bottom eliminations. I am, I am firmly on the page now. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Unfortunately, some of these players will be written off at the end of this round. It will be Dobry Jaxi. I'm so bad. And another player who has already left the server. And so we will never know who it was, unfortunately. We'll have to get Jaxi in chat in a second. The prediction from Jaxi was that they were going to get eliminated very early and that it was going to be because of checkpoint three. I think I saw Jaxi getting stuck even before checkpoint three in that round, but we'll have to get confirmation uh, and we'll figure that out sooner rather than later. In that round, a couple of decent players were in the elimination zone already. We saw Goliath make an appearance there. Goliath's made some deep runs uh, previously in mini RPG of the week and I believe does have a win to their name as well. Is that a lie? Does Goliath not have a win? That's crazy. I genuinely, I assumed Goliath had a win. I feel like we've seen them near the top a decent amount. Well, the times at the top are still good. That was a 52-1 to win that round. Uh, I don't think that we've improved the uh, overall record yet, which should still be a 51-2 by Morpio. Yeah. Scandia is still on that 51-5. Mm. So Morpio is a good 3-10 to clear at the moment. Um, and is not leading the field on this occasion, but it is the usual three suspects mm. of Yannick, Scandia, Morpio right up the front. 
I had not noticed, but we do have an appearance by Ice in uh, the Danger Zone this round. I, I didn't see him uh, either. Currently tied with Scambier. Oh. And just for uh, straight into the wall. And it is having a rough time. This is not looking maybe like the week where Ice is going to be able to challenge Scandier and uh, maybe push for that top three a little bit harder. Could still stay alive in this round. Is currently uh, two places away from safety in terms of the danger zone, but that's looking like a time gap of about six seconds yeah. that he needs to clear. And he's running out of map to do it in as well. This could be a very early exit for Ice. Yeah, I didn't even see him on the leaderboard. I was looking because oh. obviously it matters between him and Scandia. If Scandia wins this, he will go into an undisputed third place. Ice is out. And it was two seconds, the gap uh, to safety in the end. So a very early departure from Ice there. And Scandia now potentially can capitalize in terms of the overall leaderboard if he can convert this into a win. Yeah. Uh, and has been pointed out there as well. Thank you, Jackson Chat. You can actually look at the color next, the, the color of the time next to someone's name on the leaderboard on the left to figure out what's going to happen to them at the end of the round if their position stays the same. Orange means they'll be in the danger zone. Red means they'll be eliminated. Green means they will be safe ah, in the next yeah. round entirely. Gotcha. Yeah. Very nice. I'm definitely. I noticed that before. I swear. <laughs> I'm good at this. <laughs> I could have figured that out. Also, here we go. On this leaderboard, you can see how many times someone has been in the danger zone so far tonight. Uh, no one has really managed to hit big numbers just yet. A couple of players on their second appearance. A couple of players eliminated already. Eight more eliminations. Uso, Sapphire, Poku. Uh, I think really big names. Afira, definitely a good player as well. Neko Glassy we've seen floating around too, so... It's always scary, you know? Sometimes you do just end up in uh, a relatively early round with a surprisingly stacked danger zone, and all of a sudden you're saying like, well, uh, this looks tough. Like, Uso for a moment, uh, sitting in third place just behind Yannix and Scandier off of the start line, and that just means it gets all the ha much harder for everyone else in the danger zone. That's tough for Neko Glossy. It should roll down into the checkpoint, upside down, double respawn, but able to continue the map at the very least. Yeah, I think that that uh, quarter pipe jump there is the, the killer of the most players so far because you land on the top of that and it's basically it's basically like marbles on stream you are the marble <laughs> and you have to fall down in a way such that you get to the checkpoint and can double respawn uh, and if you don't well it's time to have another go and it does seem to be very punishing yeah, and uh, well, one player's already gone. If here has chosen to hit the escape button, Sapphire with an overtake on Nobi is looking to stay safe in this round. There goes Nobi though. Oh, that was close. They're both safe. Gap of a tenth, and I believe it was Issa Flyer who had dropped back down. Maybe it was Sax. Someone had respawned in front of them, and both of them in that battle pushed for the line. Both of them rewarded for their efforts. New PB by Scandia. That was a 51-4 in that round. Uh, taking another victory. We haven't seen any of the top three in the danger zone yet. Uh, that would be Yannix, uh, Scandia, and remind me of his name that begins with M, please. Morpio. Mor Morpio, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. That is the top three? Yeah. And then you have yeah. Artis on a 52-1, Hazard on a 52-7. Uh, so there is quite a gap between those top three and the rest of the field at the moment. Whether we actually see them in the top three, will remain to be seen. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And I will say, you know, we have seen some incredible performance so far this season under this new format as well. I believe we have had at least one edition where Scandier has managed to reach the top two with no appearances in the danger zone up to that point, uh, which is, I mean, pretty much a flawless week at that point under this format, right? Uh, just never even really being at risk. Yeah, that is like insane consistency on this kind of map where, you know, one... One clip, one nose down, one not having enough speed to get over a certain jump could spell disaster for the whole map. Um, just no mistakes, which is yeah. insane. Um, <laughs> has he made a mistake? Is that why you're left. laughing at me? No, 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 no. It's just that there were 39 players left and our danger zone was all, like the top four were sitting in the top 10, essentially, for about half right. the map there. It has broken up a little bit now. Wendigo dropping back to 27th and the gap between Wendigo and Mehalo, absolutely nothing. Wendigo has stayed in front, Wendigo has stayed in front and, uh, well, Mehalo has dropped no, a long hasn't. way back. Oh, well, okay, never mind. Has dropped back now. Bayron, I believe, should have overtaken him. Maybe be somewhere in front, just about behind. Has gotten in front, never mind. By a bit. Just needs to get a clean to the finish. Surely there's no mistakes from anyone in front. Bayron will finish 27th. Mehla had it right up until they didn't. Yep. Straight into the wall, and that was the end of that.
I'm wondering how this fragile block is affecting players though, because I'm not really seeing any players get fragiled, if you know what mm. I mean. It's potentially if you carry too much speed and hit the wall, obviously yeah. then it's it's gonna really slow you down. But I feel like that would slow you down regardless of yeah. um whether you were fragile or not. But I don't know if it means like if you crash you physically can't make but ja it. Jaxi does hill. also think it's engine off, so it's possible I just misread the sign, which is actually I I believe I is the the lightning bolt, now that you mention it, may in fact have been the engine off block and I'm just stupid. No, the engine off one is the red cross. I, it definitely, like, the color of it would definitely look like a fragile block. But... Yeah, but I don't trust colors when there's mods. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, and also Jaxi has played the map, so I'm going to trust Jaxi's gut yeah, feeling right. I'm gonna on what it felt like to well, drive yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, listen, who knows? Um, uh, well, probably someone does at this point. Uh, yeah, we could listen for engine sounds, but I do love the sound of my own voice. I can hear the engine sounds. Uh, do you know what? I'll, I'll tell you this round. I, I will mm. listen at full volume, and I will okay. tell you if there's an engine You're off. A brave Please, man. producer guy, do not <laughs> do the funniest thing imaginable at this moment. <laughs> Simply definite right. Well, here you go. The first ever live giving of tinnitus to someone on a broadcast on this channel. Uh, we won't do it. It is Poku chasing down Deloid at the moment. Uh, both of them chasing down Aura, who is just in front, but has, someone has crashed. It was neither of them. I believe Sidzer has dropped all the way to the back. So Poku is chasing Deloid. It'll be close. It's not close enough. Gap of a few tenths. And uh, yeah, that's definitely an engine off block. Can no, confirm. It's no. It's an en no, it is. It is. You then just get a reset just before you go around the corner. Uh, it is I engine saw off. Sidzer start to accelerate up the hill. and I was, That, oh, that the is reset. the reset there. So your engine yeah, no, off up until that point. Yeah. That makes sense. So you just need to get your angle right, one good transition, and then you're through. That's very the nice. one. Yeah, very clean. So there we go. Uh, four more players eliminated, and we head into our next danger zone. Sapphire showing up. One player from Team Unity, Deloid, was uh, in that danger zone last time around. And uh, another one entering now as well. Well, we have 31 players left. I believe we probably started with around 64. So at this point halfway through our total player count. Um, have there been any improvements on the leaderboard is what I want to know. Nope, Scandir has improved his time to a 51.4, but uh, Morpia still at the top with that 51.2, which I believe was, was it in the first round or was that in no, the it, time it was trial? No, it was very late in the, at the end of time right. trial. Right, okay. One of the last runs to sneak in before uh, round started. And also just worth noting, Telne has managed to sneak into the top three there, a time of a 51.6 as well. So uh, looking solid uh, up at the top there now. Sapphire having a tough time, but was sitting clean up near the top of the danger zone, but now has dropped back into uh, a couple of places off from safety, and that'll be worse. Sapphire, that's a tough respawn. This checkpoint three is a difficult one. Gets an unintentional <laughs> bug slide with the reactor on, and that may be all she wrote for Sapphire at this point. I think so. That's looking very close to a DNF. Neko Jim has already DNF. Manchmoilabole trying to chase down Dazzle. Keep your eyes out. I can see Dazzle going up the hill at the end there alongside Scandir and will finish. Pun Pun, though, has crashed. Is there space? There is not. Manchmoilabole will not catch back up. And it will be Warl, Shinex, Dazzle, and Punpun who survived the Battle Royale, Hell in a Cell, that is the Danger Zone. I think this reactor here, you could also get a zoop on it. The the mapper was saying about that. So I think that that might be where people are gaining time, as that was quite a wicked little uh, yeah. transition there, but ultimately not going to not gonna result in any time. Um, but yeah, I think it's like a combination of zoop and bug slide, but... The only problem is the more speed you carry out of there, the next, the the harder the next section then becomes because you are you've just got these transitions coming at you at a hundred miles an hour, and then you have to go into the um, like quarter pipe jump as well. So yeah, catching a few players out just by kind of having their car angled up and getting an unintentional zoop, which then just plants them face first into the next wall. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. There's a few very difficult sections, kind of deceptively tricky sections in the middle of this track, just kind of coming about because of the awkward block placements. Uh, deliberately so, absolutely. You know, that kind of older school RPG style. Ganta survives just about off of the start line. But forcing you to kind of bobble the car to get your line absolutely right or you will just be going in a direction you never expected. Oh, it's awkward for Pun Pun. Is he going to make this? No, he has to fully respawn all the way at the back of the field now, so he's going to have to have a clean run from here. 
Um, fourth place in the danger zone right now is 12th total. And yeah, that's a gap of eight seconds or so. So I doubt that that's going to happen. Uh, but you never know. This map seems to be throwing up a lot of issues for a lot of players. Um, and as we've said before as well, one mistake inevitably leads to another one. So anything is possible. As Dazzle just about makes it by the skin of his teeth going into the finish in 12th place, third in the danger zone. Does get up there. Where is Gonta? I believe he is already in as well. Uh, Alex, yeah. So Gonta in five second gap. So we will be losing Alex Pun Pun, who did actually make it up to 20th in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, Roy Biceps and Aura, I'm going to pronounce that as. Yeah, that seems fair. Uh, Caster favorite, uh, Roro Biceps. Roro Biceps. Just a great name all around. <laughs> and also had a very uh, solid run a few weeks back, uh, managing to survive many, many danger zones. Not this week, though. Uh, getting eliminated the first time down into that danger zone, unfortunately. And so we'll be going no further here in Crystal Sanctuary. Deloid will make a return to that danger zone as well for a second time. A few other players joining. A lot of players having their second time in the danger zone in this round. And as we know, half of them will go no further. Now, I don't speak French, but mm. I think I know what Deloid has just put in chat. I think, <laughs> is that is that panic? Y yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that is, I am not going to finish panic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I well, feel like that we'll sentiment is shared by a lot of players at the moment on this map. Yeah. I mean, just the, the danger zone, I think, does have to heighten that tension for players as well, right? I mean, under a more traditional kind of elimination format, you know, any round could be your last. But when you enter the danger zone and you know it is do or die time, when you have to deliver, and especially on a map that is proving this tricky for players to just get down, when any jump, any turn could spell disaster, that's that's stress, man. That is sweaty hands on the controller. Yeah, having played like mini RPG of the week myself as well, like <laughs> to think that you know it's not just a case of oh okay, I just don't have to finish in the bottom four. It's I have to beat four other players that might be in the top ten at some yeah. point during the round. <laughs> like that's stressful. Yeah, I mean, kind of almost what happened in this round, you know, 23 players remain and you have Aluji there at the top of the danger zone, 10th place, Vortex in 11th and Shinex behind in 12th, Deloid, the final safe player in 14th, you know, these players are not driving slowly and uh, it's definitely tough for some of them, but four stay alive, four go home, Gonta back in the danger zone again, it'll be a third visit for Dazzle and equally for Roman, for Deloid and for Shinex, starting to stack some of those numbers up and it doesn't get any easier from here either, even if any of those three-time players manage to survive now, you'd expect to see that number tick up to four or five pretty soon. Yeah, 19 players left though, and we're still seeing a lot of mistakes. It, we haven't really seen a, a fully clean round yet. I mean, a, apart from the top 10, obviously, who are just driving insane times as someone goes face first into the wall on the right-hand side there. We've lost another player on the left. Gonta with a little touch is going to have to respawn, is not going to have the speed, and finds himself all the way at the back of the field. Another touch. It's not looking good for Gonta. But we'll go on board with Luces now, chasing down Dazzle, Yog, Deloid, uh, who are currently top 10, top 11. I believe Shinix must have made a mistake there, as now Luce is promoted into 11th. Chasing down Dazzle, who's just in front. It's going to be quite a close battle. Scandia is also a bit further down oh. than we would expect, but obviously not in the danger zone. Luce is bumping into everything possible. Is he going to make this jump? Yes. Next one coming up gets that one as well. But I think Dazzle Romance is slow. just too far. Roman Slow takes the safe in as well. It's going to be a race to the finish. Roman actually going for that, and Luce is, makes it in ahead of Roman in the end. Nice times in chat. What was the winning time there? Yes. Yannick, 51-1. Wow. That's quick. That is quick from Yannick. And our first proper look at the safe finish there as well. Finishing in the same finish as the Risky, just a much longer route to get there. I think if you were driving them both at the same speed, probably about a second, second and a half. But for uh, Roman in that round, was driving a lot slower than Luce's entering that finish area as well. That's why he had to opt for the safe route and ultimately losing by about two seconds. So tough there and uh, will be eliminated. We're down into four players in the danger zone at this point and that's that's a stacked danger zone already. Hazard, Telnay, Vortex all sitting near the top of the leaderboard in terms of times. Vortex as well has had some very strong rounds in the danger zone already tonight. And uh, well, Warl's here and not a player to underestimate, I think, either. 
I think I might have just seen Telne. Oh no, I, I saw a player with a blue club tag go into the wall, but not in the danger zone, but more than likely will be in the next round. As last player in the danger zone at the moment is Vortex Telne though, uh -oh. with a big clip, and he's really going to struggle to make these transitions. Feels like it's curtains for Telne. We'll see if Vortex can get himself out. See Yannick a bit far down there. Vortex is not looking good for him. Wall is much further up the road. About a second that Vortex is going to have to make up. Telne is way out of it at this point. Um, yeah, way behind. It's going to be a race to the finish. Wall, does he get in? Oh, oh no! Wall with a crash. Vortex with the PayPal makes it in in front. It all fell apart at the end for Wall. <laughs> oh, that's the, literally the final turn uh, on the inside. And as the well. easiest Just... turn of the whole map. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, it, that's the nerves, right? That's getting to the final turn, having done the work and just wanting to be at the finish line, tasting the finish line and turning in too early. That is tough. Meanwhile, Hazard was in the danger zone and came second in the round. So, yeah, you know, that, that's what happens, right? <laughs> Sometimes players do just pop off when they get down there. Artis in this danger zone as well, one to keep an eye on. Luce is in for what at this point? Can we just pull up the scoreboard? Is this his fourth or fifth visit now to the danger zone? Third. Only third. A oh, third. Okay. Okay. Fair but, enough. Um... Yeah, it's uh, Talion as well. This is his first time. Artis with not the best start. Going to get a very slow plastic bounce as well. Uh, does make it through cleanly. Yuzo has dropped pretty far back. He's currently at the back of the field. See if oh, Tommy Artis will touch. can make this quickly. Oh, there's someone stuck on the top there as well. I couldn't quite see Tommy. who that was. But that Tommy, yeah. I think so. So he is all uh, the way at the back. Oh, Luce is not. not going too well for him either. Uh, there is Tommy. So needs to catch up with RT so you can see just in front. Nice little bug slide there. Stays within contention, but isn't really making up any ground at the moment. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, Tommy, I don't think, actually got stuck on that quarter pipe, but a touch just on the way into it. Definitely lost a lot of speed early in the map. He's been playing catch-up ever since. This is our T's first Sertalion. They just need to play it safe. They have time to play with, and they will both make it. Gap of a tenth and a half, seventh and eighth for the two players at the top of the danger zone. Tommy finishes in ninth, one place behind them, but unfortunately with a gap of just over a second. And Luces will look to at least bring it home, get that car across the line. Don't make the engineers work any more than they have to when you get back to the garage, but it will unfortunately be going back to the garage after this one yep well we're almost at top t oh i think we are at top 10 here no uh we are top one place off top 10 yeah so uh well two players will be eliminated but one of them will make it onto the liquidpedia page nonetheless oh is it two only two now oh no two eliminated sorry yes uh artis making a return vortex again for what feels like the third round in a row uh, Deloweed back down there. I think that's his third time in the drop zone as well. Um, oh, everyone getting a reasonably clean start. I think there was someone with a small touch, but I think everyone's got through. It might be Vortex down the back, actually. And Deloweed, yeah. So Vortex, a couple of seconds behind. Deloweed, does he get this cleanly? Yes. So chasing down Aluji, who you can see just in front of Sir Tally on there. Dazzle coming through, but not in danger. I saw someone clip there. Was that Artis straight into the transition? Yeah. So Artis right down the back of the field. Now Vortex coming through. If Luigi makes a mistake in front, this could actually promote Deloid and Vortex into uh, first and second in terms of the danger zone. Yeah, I, I'll say it. I mean, look, this is relative. Sorry, this is close. I'll say it in a second because Vortex is right behind Deloid. I did not realize how close they'd managed to stay. Any mistakes? Oh, the snipe! Oh, oh the Woo! snipe! On the inside goes Vortex. That is heartbreaking for Deloid. He had done everything he needed to. Didn't want to m repeat the mistakes that we saw earlier. The crash on the inside from someone. Uh, getting them out on the final turn and just played it a little too safe. Vortex with the risk is still in the danger zone. Makes another visit straight back. Couldn't get that far clear, but is safe for that last round. And looking good at the start of this one as well. Yeah, I think Satalion made a mistake right at the start. He's already four seconds behind, so that feels Oof. like his run is already over. Uh, Aluji is... Also cooked. Aluji's made a mistake as well. Yeah, Vortex makes it clean, so it's Aluji and Satalion right at the back. Um, Vortex and Dazzle, Dazzle not that are... Far in front. He's not that far, no. And there he is. Has not made he the crashed. transitions clearly either. Dazzle crashing. 
So Talion back. Vortex having the cleanest round out of the four so far. He's got a three second advantage over oh. Satalion. Aluji with another crash there. Satalion at this point just has to kind of keep it clean and he's pretty much safe. Dazzle is way out of it. Seems like Vortex is going to survive for another time and might not even be in the danger zone. This is his fifth danger zone and finishes first out of the four protagonists here. Yeah, we're down to two person danger zones after this. Aluji and Dazzle will be the final victims of a four person danger zone. And uh, I believe that was Aluji then making his way onto the Liquipedia page in 10th place as well. Dazzle, after four visits to the danger zone, missing out by one place. Well played by Vortex as well. I'm going to say what I was going to say earlier as well, which is that watching this map be played is really making me want to go and replay all of the artifact maps. Uh, you know, Eon 42, one of that pack that this is based on as well. But all of those maps were super fun RPGs. If anyone is looking for an RPG to play as well, highly recommend going and checking those out. They're not super difficult. They were built for competition. You know, the world record times are four, five, six minutes uh, at most. And they don't take that long to discover, but they are super fun to play. Oh, it feels like Yuzo is full dead here. Satalion versus Yuzo. Satalion is doing great. Yuzo in the mud right now. I don't even think he is going to... He might not even make it over that quarter pipe, to be honest, with the crash and the mm. speed that he had. 10 seconds behind. He's driving cleaner now, but I think it's going to need a complete capitulation from Satalion here uh, for Yuzo to actually have a chance of catching up. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to point out as well that um, Artifact is spelt A-R-T-E-F-A-C-T. -E it's an E instead of an I, just in case anyone is going to go and look up those maps as well, uh, if you're looking up for them on Mania Exchange or something like that, because I don't want anyone to go looking for them and not be able to find them, because I didn't provide that information. So, Scandia has just set a 51-2, so I believe Ooh, the on. pecking order is now Yannex 51-1, <laughs> Morpheo 51 2, Scandia 51 2. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Look that's looking stacked. Zone, we have Yannex versus Hazard here, though, in oh, the danger boy. zone. Uh, it's top five. And who is that? Was that. Who just fell off? Oh, it's that's Satali on it. Satali. Oh, it's Vortex. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Look, he's not in the danger zone, so the battle will continue for Yannix and Hazard. And Hazard is slightly behind at the moment, but that's only because Yannix, I believe, is actually just in the lead of this round. That's the point of competition no, that we are at. Yeah, Scandier in the lead. Yannix just behind. Hazard is within touch oh, distance, especially if Yannix misses his jump on the way through checkpoint three. It's oh. been said... It's long been said that checkpoint three was going to cause problems tonight, and even here in the top six, it is still causing problems. One of the big three looks to be taken down. Hazard, five tenths off the pace, being set by the top three, but ultimately in the round, held his nerve, and Yannex is going to be uh, quite a big victim here. So, Scan, you'd have to say it's got to be between Scandi and Morpio now. Maybe Hazard <laughs> if he keeps it clean. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. Um, I'm just going to point out the time that Scandi has just set before we start oh talking about anyone God. else being a threat. <laughs> I called it that a Scandi map ridiculous. at the top of the night. And, uh, sure Slowly chipping way. away down through the 51s, and my guy just comes in and sets a 50.5. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, uh, he's also the only player uh, after this round as uh, our last remaining player, Morpio, to not have seen a danger zone. Now sees it. Scandier, the only player still sitting with a goose egg next to his name on visits to that danger zone tonight. He's feeling good. It has to be said right now. Morpio, though, chasing him down in this round and leaving Sir Talion a little ways behind off of the start line at the very least. Can Sir Talion pull it back? And Morpio, look to continue this run. Two wins in a row in the last two weeks of mini RPG of the week. Looking to make to, to another finals, potentially, if he can survive this round. Yeah, so Talion is not too far behind, though. Didn't look great when he was first in that danger zone, but seems to have cleaned his runs up a little bit. They're just not quite as fast as what Morpio seems to be capable of. It's going to take a mistake here from Morpio for Satalion to catch up. And we're almost at the end of the map. Are we going to see another mistake right at the end? Morpio almost sniping Hazard, but it is going to be Satalion dropping out. Vortex going into the danger zone along with um, Morpio. Morpio, I believe. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, Scander is locked in at this point. That's a 50.6 again. Um, what has he just uh, found? He's Surely just he's found man. something. I don't think so. I think Scandir is just locked in. I think Scandir has hit these final few rounds and has said like, oh, by the way, I've, I've found where to save time across this entire map. I've figured I, it out. I can only feel like it's got to be that Zoop after checkpoint three that he has just nailed like two runs yeah. in a row. Uh, because that is a huge time gain. Like, he's about a tenth behind at the moment. Vortex in third place, uh, in fourth place, sorry, as things stand. Does make the jump nice and cleanly, though, but is going to be way behind the rest of the field. Getting the zoop nicely, and it's still not over just yet. Does make all the transitions. So he's driving a decent round. And I mean, considering Vortex has been in that danger zone about seven or eight times Hang now. On. Um, Hang on. Yeah. Oh, it's close all of a sudden. It's yeah. very close all of a sudden. Vortex just on the taillights of Morpio, heading into the final couple of jumps. There's not a huge amount of space left to gain time here, but an, even a small mistake from Morpio now will spell the end and let Vortex back through. Not going to make it. Vortex eliminated in fourth place. Was, I think, definitely the underdog. Six visits to the danger zone tonight, and finally someone manages to take him out, but it took until the top four to do so. So danger zone now, Scandia Morpio? Correct? Uh, no, well, Morpio, Morpio Hazard. Morpio Hazard. Scandier entering another finals with no danger zone appearances. Yeah, kind of crazy. He also did a 50.7 last round as well. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, cool, <laughs> driving out of his mind. Uh, yeah. oh, Hazard goes very inside there. Should still have the speed to make this, though, and does. Morpio in the lead in his battle with Hazard. But Hazard with a bit more speed over the transitions. He's going to catch up slightly. Who is going to get the best exit out of the quarter pipe? It is going to be Morpio, but Hazard once again right on his Good tail. Speed. Good speed from Hazard. Who gets the better bug slide? Hazard exits oh. with more speed. Morpio into the wall slightly. Hazard towards the end of the map pulls out a half tenth, half a second gap. Is he going to hold on to it? Morpio slightly more speed, but Hazard in with a 51.8. Scandia though. Bit of a shaky round from him. Five seconds off the pace, but ultimately is going to make it into that final. It's Scandia versus Hazard for the win. And Hazard pick up another win. Keep Scandia tied with ice down in third place on the overall winner scoreboard. And move just that little bit closer to all absolute safety in that top three. It's going to be close. It's going to be tied. It's a battle we've seen before, and it's a battle I've no doubt we'll see again before season four ends. At least I hope we do, because these two are at the top of their game. At the moment, it's Scandier chasing. He started slow in the last couple of rounds, but this is very slow indeed. Yeah, he's a second behind right now. Has enough speed for the jump. Uh, has it with a bit of a slowdown there. Scandier is catching up and is going to have more speed going through the transitions into the quarter pipe jump. Scandier just getting in front. But Hazard jumps higher, should have more speed on the exit. Oh. Here, Scandi with a huge crash, though, on the transition. And Hazard, all he has to do is keep it clean. And he will be more than the undisputed. He will be two wins ahead of Yannex for the 12th time in, a, in history. Hazard into the finish. And the undisputed champ further extends his lead. 12 wins all time for Hazard. Daylight between first and second on that overall leaderboard as well. And a massive victory. Scandier makes only one visit to the danger zone tonight. But one is all it takes. Eliminated in that final head-to-head -head against Hazard. And I'm just very impressed all around. That was sick. Really cool map. Very challenging, but once again, optimized by the best players. Um, I kind of wish we... Could have seen a, a Yannix or Yannix Scandi or Yannix yeah. Morpio because they were like the top three throughout. But Hazard was that dark horse, like didn't have the fastest time, but ultimately kept it clean throughout all the rounds and then beat out the indomitable Scandi right at the end. Yeah, absolutely massive performance and. Uh... Yeah, as we say, moves a little bit closer to the guaranteed place at Mini RPG of the Week Ultimate LAN that is going to be coming up in May. I should have checked the dates while I had time during the stream, but I haven't. And so, whatever, you can go and find them for yourself. Of course, the top three winners all time will lock in their spot. will also be guaranteed a hoodie along with it, a piece of merch to go with the, their ticket to it. 
but they won't be the only ones. You can get your very own Ticket to Mini RPG of the Week Ultimate along with one of those hoodies or a t-shirt if you so choose. Uh, price is very competitive. Uh, well worth it as well. I really like the hoodie and those will go on sale tonight. I believe ticketing will open in about 25 minutes. It is due at quarter past the hour that is coming up, whatever that hour is, wherever you may be. So keep an eye on that. Exclamation mark tickets in chat. We'll bring up the link that will go live at that time or you can head on over to the Discord or the Twitter account of Mini RPG of the week to keep an eye on, on that as well. It's all just very exciting. I'm looking forward to that land so very, very much. Orion, it's been a pleasure having you on. We have now less than 10 editions remaining in season four. Want to make any uh, any predictions on who our top three is going to be come the end of the season? I mean, Hazard has historically won a lot, right? But I didn't know how much he'd been winning recently. So yes. the fact that I've seen him win here shows that he is still in top form. Mm. So I would say Who's Hazard definitely. Yeah, yeah, Hazard definitely top top three. Uh, I have to say Yannix as well. And just given his current win rate, Scandia seems like a safe bet. Uh, in I'll, what I'll order? You. Yeah, no, know. that's fair. I'm going to agree with you provisionally, but I will say Ice has won an addition in season four and Yannix has not. So more recent win for Ice and only two wins behind Yannix as well. Could always come in as the dark horse uh, from the top ropes to potentially snipe that place away. I don't know what tiebreakers are. I'm sure Zetarate can inform people uh, of that if you ask him. It might even be in the rule book somewhere in terms of how that works for the top three. Uh, but I don't know it off the top of my head. And so I'm going to say that's an exciting battle to keep your eyes on as we count down the weeks to mini RPG of the week ultimate. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us here. We are just rapidly running out of time on this. It's been a long time and uh, it's pretty great. So, Orion, thank you again for joining us this week. The player, thanks for working behind the scenes. We'll see everyone back next week for another edition of Mini RPG of the Week. And, uh, well, we'll see some of you in France as well. Go and get your tickets tonight. In our basement until the sun began to rise We would go to school but not learn too much Cause it's hard to read when you've got tired eyes They've been with me for some time and it's nice to know that they still by my side